So we're, we're going through the last part of, of pipe flow. So what we have are really two things to, to deal with. We've got to talk about maybe uh, the remainders of these examples of types 1, 2, and 3 pipe flow in single circuits, where you have a track from upstream to downstream. And we've also, on a separate occasion, talk, got to talk about pipe networks, where maybe you have branching flows uh, or parallel flows in, in more than one channel. So those are the two things that we really need to take care of. We've talked about uh, Moody charts. We've talked about how to convert parameters to deal with Moody charts when they're non-circular section uh, behaviors. We know that the standard equation is this. Um, we know, you know also, tell me what the, um, the rules are for this uh, expression. So are there any conventions that we need to, to use? There's only a few, right? Upstream is the left-hand side, of course, number one. Downstream is the right-hand side. Uh, HP is always positive if you're putting energy into the system. It's negative if you're taking it out as a turbine. Um, head losses are always positive. And I guess the only other thing that's worthwhile remembering is that this pump head is equal to the power divided by the the mass flow rate. It's not sharing. It's not sharing. Uh, is that right? <laughs> they missed the pipe, the crack smoke in there. Oops. Hello? Is anyone there? <laughs> I guess not. Uh, yeah, it's flashing for someone. It's on, right? It should be there, right? Are you getting a text otherwise? No. Yeah. You'll get one otherwise, yeah. Good, okay. I guess you can raise your hand, right, in that thing or not? Can someone raise their hand? <laughs> not in here, I saw that. <laughs> oh, yes, all right. No, perhaps I can't. Who knows? Well, we don't want to encourage, converse, encourage conversation uh, sorry. or interaction, right? Don't do that. All right, so, um, so that's the expression we need to use. And so, as I say, type one, uh, remember. And we have the expressions for losses. We went through a couple of examples last time. Uh, we went really through a, a type two example. Um, you might remember it. It seemed a little more involved than it perhaps needed to be, but the basics of it were that if you have this thing closed, then as you'd imagine, if there's no velocities anywhere, you'd expect the fluid pressures to be the same all the way through there. And so if you plotted, say, the, uh, the pressure through the system, initially it was some magnitude, I think it was 400 kPa, and then when we changed it to here, then all of a sudden the pressure here went to zero kPa. And so the question is, how does that change through the system as you go from one location to another? And so to cut to the chase, what we did was we solved the problem for the first case, which was trivial because we knew the pressures were the same through it. Then we solved the problem when this magnitude was zero kPa to figure out what the flow rate was out of here. Once we know what that flow rate is, we could calculate what the pressure was here. Once we knew what the pressure was here for the case that was closed and the case that was open, then all we needed to do was to calculate the pressure change by going up in a column of water, which would be you know, the change in pressure is equal to um, the unit weight times the elevation as you go up here, you know, fluid statics, to get the pressure at the bottom of this um, column. Uh, and then the only problem with that is that the bottom of this column, the height is unknown because it's closed in with a, a cap of, of air. And that was the kind of complication to it. And so all it was is to, to figure out writing this equation for this closed cap of air under two pressure conditions when it's open and closed and be able to figure out exactly what the 
height of this was uh, because of the, the mass of air didn't change. So it's kind of an involved calculation, but that was basically the, the, the calculation. So it kind of obscured the, the real components of it. More complicated than on a, you'd have on a, on a test, for instance, if you're looking for... Uh, that's not the reason I'm going through it, um, just in case. You're trying to read something between it. Okay, a type 2. So I guess the, the other problems are the type 3 ones are where we have to figure out the, the geometry, which are the, the most difficult. The uh, type 2 ones are when we have to figure out the, the pressures or the heights that are uh, fluid pressures loading the system. So type 2 is, is the, the next one. So we have a pump. The pump adds uh, 25 kilowatts into the system. Um, and we know the flow rate, so that's helpful to us. We know Q. And if we know Q, we also know that um, Q is equal to the velocity times the area. Because typically Bernoulli is written in terms of uh, velocities. And so we know the flow rate through the system. We know the friction factor uh, in the tube. Um, and we know how long it is. And we know the diameter length and diameter of the tubes. So we, we know those components. Um, we don't have any uh, minor losses in it, but we have uh, the major losses, which are just due to the pipe. And we don't know what this uh, height of water is. Um, term the flow rate expected if the pump is removed from the system. Yeah, okay. So we know that we're kicking out water here. We know that there's 25 kilowatts going into the pump, perfect pump. We know that what the friction is but we don't know what the, the head is that gives us this particular flow rate. So the first question is, what is the, the head? And again, I guess then, if uh, you take the pump out and let it run at that head, what is the flow rate? This is asked. Yeah, so, so it's a two-stage process. One, how high is the head in here that gives you this flow rate for this input of energy? And once you know what this head is, if you put this pump to zero, what's the, the, the then flow rate out of the system? That, that's it. So we have Bernoulli. Uh, we can write behavior at downstream and upstream, upstream and downstream. So upstream is going to be this location here. So de facto, what do we know? If we write our expression, bless you, on the surface, it's uh, zero. The big tank um, assumption, uh, if it's a big tank, then this is zero, bless you. Um, the elevation, we don't know. And so I guess we just need to take our datum somewhere here, right, through this, this point, just to make life easy for us. You could put it here if you wanted, but that's, that's, that's um, oh, yeah, OK. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we know that this is um, not 25 watts, but we know that HP is equal to the wattage divided by the volumetric flow rate times unit weight, rho g. And we do know what this is, right? Because we're given that. And so we know that this is 25 kilowatts. Newton meters per second, right? And we know that this is whatever this is. And we know what these are. So presumably we can calculate that straight off. So we, we, we can get that. Uh, at point two, so that's the upstream part and the pump. It's positive because it's a pump. Um, we know that this is issuing out of here at a velocity which is equal to, um, we don't know, but we can calculate what it is. We know that since it's coming into the atmosphere, this pressure here is zero as well. And uh, we know what the velocity is because we know the flow rate and we know the diameter. And I guess you know the tricky deal here is that we have a diameter here, but we have a different diameter for the pipe. And so you'll note that when we look at this velocity at the outlet and the velocity in the pipe, they don't have the same subscript. So, so presumably from Q, we can calculate what V2 is. We know that the elevation at that point for our datum is zero meters. 
And we know the friction factor is equal to 0 0.016. We know length and diameters that we have here. And we also know that the flow rate, I guess, we could also write that the, the flow rate also has to equal the area of the pipe times the velocity in the pipe. Right? So those two separate expressions. So both of these are true uh, from continuity. Right? The same amount of fluid that's going along the streamline, cut the streamline at any point, it has to be the same. And so uh, what do we have to solve for? I guess the only thing that's in here that we don't know is this. Right? We can solve for Z1. Uh, and that, that's, that's really, I think, all we're doing. So we, th we know everything. We know this velocity as a function of the cross-sectional area and the flow rate. We know this velocity as a function of the cross-sectional area and the flow rate. We know this is zero. We know the friction factor, uh, which doesn't change with Reynolds number because it's given as uh, a single number, right? This, this one here. We know length of diameter of the pipe which will be just, you just have to use the same units, right? A dimensionless number, so you just have to use 60 times 10 to the minus 3. And use 30 meters long. And um, everything we should be able to get. And so we can substitute into HP. And if you do that, I guess the pump gives 64 meters of head. And if you add that in for this expression here, then we should be able to solve for the magnitude of H, which is 69.5. And so what that's saying is that um, the height in this is equal to um, 69, almost 70 meters. Physically, I... Uh, um, yeah, so the head here is equal to... To, to that magnitude. Um, so now, if you go through this, we have the value of this. So now you just turn off the pump. So put this equal to zero, or I guess won't we'll score it out. So now set um, the pump wattage equal to zero. If you set the pump wattage to zero, then physically that means that HP has to be zero. I see a hand. Yeah? Where did I plug in the cross-sectional area? Where did I plug in the cross-sectional area? Um, which, which one? Well, yeah, you, so you need to, so the area here is going to be A2, right? So I think that's on this line here. So the calculations here, the velocity at 2 is going to be equal to just by changing this around is equal to volumetric flow rate, which is constant divided by the area. So this is uh, pi d squared. So this is the diameter, which is uh, 4 centimeters, 40 millimeters. So this is d. This is d nozzle. And this is d pipe. Is that the question? So they're just different. I mean, they're different magnitudes. And so this, uh, someone came up at the end of the class and asked where the one was that came in our reordering of an equation. So the one is really the, the nozzle velocity. If you take all the velocities outside, typically you see that this parameter here is a function of velocity. This parameter here is a function of velocity. And if you had a term here, you, you could take them all on the right-hand side. And you just have to then add together the, the friction factors and the, the minor losses. So yeah, so those are the, the diameters. And so then you just go through this equation again with the, um, with the pump, and you can go back through this expression. So the expression before we had a zero, a zero. The only active terms we had was that this was equal to what we didn't know. So now this h is equal to 69.5. Um, this is equal to zero, and the only two terms we have on the right-hand side are this and this. And so that's exactly this. So this is the upstream elevation, 
This is the downstream velocity coming through the nozzle, which we don't know. So we don't know this. And this is the downstream velocity coming through the pipe, and we don't know that either. But we do know that the volumetric flow rate is equal to the velocity at point 2 times A2, and it's also equal to the velocity in the pipe times the area of the pipe. And so we can convert each of these into those. So it's easiest to, to rearrange this, I suppose, as something like Z1 is equal to, um, what would it be? So you take your choice. It doesn't really matter. I suppose if you want uh, the, the one coming out of the pipe, you could always write it as this just goes to being V2 is equal to V times A over A2. And so V2 is equal to velocity times, this is going to just be D squared over D2 squared. The, the pi D, the pi, pi D over, the pi over four terms both cancel out. And so you could substitute this in for this. Whoops, sorry. And so if this is squared and this is squared, then this is to the four and this is to the 4. And so you should be able to write this as, uh, I'm going to write it down here, Z1 is equal to, you can take the 1 over 2G terms out, and you can put in the V2 squared term, which is equal to V squared, which you take out here. And so this would be D to the 4 over D2 to the 4 times V2 plus friction factor and length over diameter. And then this term here is already out here, right? And so hopefully that should be what they, they have. So I think it is, right? So that's the other way just to do that. So we know what the diameters are. This is a D, not a P. We know the length of the diameters of the pipe. We know the friction factor. We know gravity and we can solve for velocity because we know that this elevation is 69.5. And if we know that, then we, we can solve for uh, velocity. And if we know what velocity is in this, we know what the flow rate is. So that's it. Yeah. So a lot of juggling around of, of numbers, but, uh, but that's basically it. Yep. Um, uh, where are you looking? Up here? This one? Yeah. So they're, they're two separate ones. You have to use both of them, right? So this is just the, the kinetic energy that's coming out at the nozzle. And this is the loss that you get along it. They're related to each other. Actually, you could do exactly what we did here uh, to link these two, right? They're linked. So you could choose either in this particular case. Uh, because you know what the flow rate is, you can write the flow rate either in both in terms of V2 and in V, and you could substitute into this for the flow rate. Um, yeah, I, I don't think you need to make a decision. Sometimes you do, right? But here you know both of them because you know the flow rate through the pipe. Um, so, uh, another uh, question. So again, water from a large closed pressurized tank, I guess large is always a key word, right? Closed means that you may have a, an excess pressure in here, I guess. So, the question is, what's the, what's the pressure? So large closed well, yeah, I guess closed and pressurized means it might have a pressure in it, I guess. Um, tank is shown. Friction factor of the constant diameter pipe, uh, we know. So again, I think it's uh, certainly if we have a type 1 problem, yeah, you have a friction factor. If you need a Moody chart, it'll be given. So you, 
it's just much easier on the graders if you have a, a number for the friction factor and presume the ramifications are that you're presuming it's turbulent, of course, but you know that. Minor losses are neg negligible, so you don't have anyone. So determine the flow rate if the pump adds uh, one horsepower. Well, obviously I can't do this because it's in English units. But apart from that, let's kind of muddle through how we do it. Um, we have a velocity coming out of the system. So we have flow out of this through a pump. Uh, we have a static tube, which happens to have a water level in this tube that comes up to whatever this is. So we know that if you go in a pipe, that at this point here, the pressure in this pipe would be eight feet of water. You know that you can go from this point here to this point here, and it's on the same horizontal line. So you also know that it is the same um, pressure at this point here. So you know the pressure of air in the tank uh, because of this. And so you know P1. So it's equal to 8 feet of water, whatever that is, 62.4 pounds times 8, I guess, or whatever it is. Um, so we know the pressure here. Well, so, and so anyway, so we're going to write our equation between this point and the downstream point. That's what we're going to do. So that's what we're going to do to write for knowing. So again, our, our familiar expression, we know that this is equal to 8 feet of water. Um, we, uh, we Large tank. We know the elevation of this point. I guess if we take the elevation of this point as z equals 0, just because life's easy, then z1 would also be equal to 0. Um, we know the rating of the pump, 1 horsepower. Uh, I can't do that conversion, but I'll let you do that. Again, all the questions on the, the midterm are in uh, SI. Pressure here is atmospheric, by definition. Um, and we need to know what the, the velocity is coming out of it. Uh, we know that the elevation of this point is equal to 8 feet. So this is 8 feet of water, so the pressure of 8 feet of water divided by the unit weight of this has to be in units of length, which is equal to, I guess, just 8 feet, right? So this is 8 feet, and this is 8 feet. That's useful in this particular case because they cancel out. Um, and so the only terms in here that are going to be left are going to be the magnitude of the velocity as it comes out of the um, pipe, which we don't know, and the velocity in the pipe, which must be related. So just as in the previous case, the volumetric flow rate was equal to velocity 2 times A2, it's also equal to the velocity in the pipe times the area of the pipe. And... Um, Do we know the, the, the diameter? Yeah, okay. We have the, the length of the pipe and the diameter of the pipe. And you're not told that the diameter in the nozzle is any different, so I guess these are just both the same as each other. So V2 equals V1, I guess, right? I think. It doesn't say there's a nozzle that I can see, so, so that would be the case. And so the calculation that you can do then is just equal to that. So, yeah. So I think this is just, yeah. So this expression here is the, the pump rating, which we know, as a function of the power in the pump. They've used P rather than our W. So this is exactly the same as the expression that we've used. Wattage divided by volumetric flow rate times rho G, right? This is just rho G. So it's no different from that. Uh, but we don't know the flow rate yet. But we do know the flow rate is going to be linked to the velocities. And so what we're going to end up with is something which is related to the velocity for the pump rating. Um, the only other two terms that are left is this term and this term, which are both functions of the velocities. And so you can write an expression which involves the pump rating, which will have the velocity in it, which is this term here. They're all in units of length, right? Uh, Bernoulli's, all of these individual components have to be in the same units of length. 
and uh, this is the V squared over 2G, 32.2 feet per second squared. This is this term here, I think, and this is this term here. Whoops, sorry. Friction factor, uh, length, diameter, and it's a function of v squared. And so, in this particular case, yeah? Where did your feet Oh, my, they just canceled out on both sides. So, so actually, the interesting thing we'll get to it is that this, this, it, this is only very, this is only simple if it happens to be that this point here is the same height as the pressure in the reservoir, because basically it makes it equal to a zero pressure reservoir. But yeah, but they just cancel out, so we just didn't use them. So this one and this one go out. And so we have a function of v; it's v cubed, and so we can just rearrange that and solve for v. Once you know what V is, you know what the area of the pipe is, so you can solve for Q. And so that's it. And so it's just a matter of being able to figure out exactly what the individual components are. Um, the, other, the second part of the question is uh, a bit more difficult, and that is that if you now take the pipe, everyone gets that, I think, right? So the, for the, the volume flow rate. So it's just a matter of using this expression. So in the, this case, the, the pressure in the tank and the elevation of the outlet both cancelled out because they're the same. The pressure in the tank was equal to this amount. The pressure at the out, uh, sorry, the elevation of the outlet was equal to this, and the pressure is zero. If you take this nozzle now up to 10 feet, then this becomes 10 feet. This stays at 8 feet, and you, you're left with an extra 2 feet in your equation, which doesn't cancel out. And so the problem of that is that instead of having a function which is a function of v and v squared, you end up with an extra term on here, which is 2 feet. And so when you try and solve that equation for v, it's just not so easy because you have a cubic equation, a more difficult cubic equation. And so they go through the calculation for that, and they talk about the positive roots of that one, but yeah. A little more involved, but so in this particular case, it just works out to be straightforward because the pressure in the tank is actually taken to be at the same elevation as this nozzle. As you change that, it goes off. All right. Okay. So, so you have that. And so, type three. Um, so, type three are the ones where you need to perhaps the more common one, right? Where you need to. We want to send x million cubic feet from Texas to Pennsylvania. Uh, what, size pump do, what size pumps and what size uh, piping do we need to be able to do that? Uh, and so that's basically that, that question. And so here it's not uh, gas, it's a duct for an interior, you know, for an air conditioning, I suppose. Low pressure, right, if it's got corners in it. Always you have circular section pipes because they're the strongest. You can pressurize them, but for ducting you don't need that. So air is to flow through a smooth horizontal rectangular duct to the rate of 100 meters cubed a second. So you have a volumetric flow rate. Uh, you want the pressure drop to be more, no more than, so delta P1, so, no. so P1 minus P2, um, over gamma less than uh, 40 millimeters is 4 times 10 to the minus 2 meters. So pressure divided by unit weight is, um, uh, is the length. So this is this, 40 millimeters of water. So this, would be, so this would be the density of water, right, just by definition, not of air, which is going to go through the duct. So I guess that's a little twist as well. Uh, per 50 meters of duct. So L is equal to 50 meters. Aspect ratio is 3 to 1, so we want uh, uh, the width equal to 3 times the height, and so we need to do the calculations for that. So there's no pump in the system, so we can write Bernoulli just as this, uh, between upstream and downstream. Um, we know that 
the volumetric flow rate we want is equal to this. So it just gets complicated because all the, all the numbers aren't in real numbers. They're going to be functions of B and H, the width and the height. And so what do we need? So we, we're going to have, uh, well, I guess the one good thing that is good for us, I suppose, is that this term and this term are going to cancel out, right? They're going to be the same, an opposite. The, the velocity downstream, velocity upstream are going to be the same. So uh, this is going to cancel out, and the, and the conduit isn't changing um, magnitude. So we get rid of both of those. We do need this because we've said that the pressure difference between upstream and downstream has to be this. Uh, but of course, the pressure that we need to use in our equation has to be, this would be the unit weight of air, right, in this one? So I guess we have to be at least mindful of that. But the pressure drop is, it is defined in terms of millimeters of water. And so we can certainly calculate delta P from this, but the delta P we should use in here should be from that. So, so, so realize that this is our description of what the pressure drop would be. Quite normal to say what the pressure drop would be in meters of water. Uh, but the pressure head that we have to use here is going to be the pressure head of air in the system. If it's going to be horizontal, then this can be zero and this can be zero. So that makes life easy. And so actually it just turns out to be an expression which is P1 minus P2 over the unit weight of air is equal to friction factor length over diameter equivalent hydraulic diameter times V squared over 2G. So that's the expression we're using. And the rest of it comes from the fact that we need to be able to define our velocity in terms of a flow rate. So the volumetric flow rate is going to be equal to a velocity times an area. And the velocity uh, we'll have to figure out. But the area is going to be what? Bless you. 3h times <coughs> b. No, sorry. What's it going to be? It's going to be uh, b times h, which is going to be equal to 3h squared. It's not writing very well now, right? Because B is just equal to 3H. And so we can define our flow rate in terms of a velocity and this. Uh, so in other words, we could also rearrange that and define our velocity as a function of flow rate. And so we can define our uh, velocity as a function of uh, flow rate and area. That's really what we've done here. That's, that's this, basically. The other complication is that it's not a circular conduit, so we need to define our effective hydraulic diameter as four times the area of the section divided by the perimeter. And so just from the geometry, that is this expression here. And so, and we also know that our pressure change we've defined in terms of 40 millimeters of water. So in other words, if we look at this expression that we have here, we know this because it's 40 millimeters of water, so we can convert that into a pressure just by multiplying by the unit weight of water, which is this. And it just has to be equal to a friction factor we don't know, a hydraulic diameter we don't know, and a velocity we don't know because we don't know the cross-sectional areas of these things yet. And so there's the rub. We can equate these things all in terms of this desired flow rate though, which is what's being done. And if you put in some numbers for those, you end up with an expression which varies with the height of the duct and the height of the duct and the flow rate is included in here somewhere. So the pressure is included, the flow rate is embedded in here somewhere, and we don't know the height of the duct and we don't know the friction factor. And so we end up with a number which defines the friction factor and so we can just choose the size of the duct. Um, so if we know the friction factor, we can use that to calculate the Reynolds number because we know the Reynolds number is a function of the velocity 
and the hydraulic diameter and the viscosity of air. And so we, we have this. And so the bottom line is that we have a Reynolds number and a friction factor, neither of which we know. So the calculation sequence is that we have two relationships. One is a friction factor, which is defined as a function of um, the geometry. So the geometry is in terms of uh, a height and a width. And we know that the width is equal to three times the height. So we, we have a magnitude then for the friction factor as a function of the geometry. And we have a relationship for the Reynolds number as a function of the geometry as well. So remember that these uh, numbers are all dependent on the, the dimensions or the units that are used in the calculation. So, they're, so friction factor is dimensionless. This is a unit of length to the 5. So this parameter here must be a unit of length to the 1 over 5, um, just for consistency. And this has to be dimensionless, and so this number here must be units of length as well. So it doesn't, doesn't really matter so much. Um, it must have said earlier on that it was a, a smooth duct. And so this, this is a key parameter here, because a smooth duct therefore defines that the appropriate magnitude for, on the Moody chart for friction factor versus Reynolds number is this line here. And so if you look on a real Moody chart, it's this bottom, bottom line that comes along here. So we know we want to ultimately end up on, on that line somewhere. And so the calculation sequence is, uh, you could do it a variety of ways, but you can just assume a friction factor of some number, some reasonable number. And we know that they range between you know, maybe 0.1 and uh, 0, and so you can choose some number. If you choose a value of 0 0.02, you can put it into here and solve for the height. If you get the height of the duct, that gives you 1.03 meters. If you use that height of the duct, you can use that here to get a Reynolds number. And if you get the Reynolds number for this, you get 3.3 times 10 to the 6. And so we know that we need to be on a smooth duct, so we have a Reynolds number, 3.3 times 10 to the 6. Um, okay, yeah, so this is this here, so this is 10 to the 6, this is 10 to the 7, this is 1 times 10 to the 6, 2 times 10 to the 6, uh, 3 times 10 to the 6, 4 times 10 to the 6, uh, actually I can't quite see, what, no, I guess this is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, yeah, can't quite see from these these divisions here but this is no maybe this is two three four five six seven eight nine ten so anyway so three point four times ten to the six is this line here if you go up to the smooth curve here and across here then it gives you a magnitude of zero point zero zero nine five maybe and the initial value we chose was 0 0.02, so it's clearly not concurrent with that. And so what we clearly don't have a match between the, the right numbers. And so with this value, this revised value, the friction factor of 0 0.095, 0 0.0095, we can use that. So these, this friction factor and this Reynolds number didn't match up. So we're using this Reynolds number. Um, the intersection with a smooth pipe to get a new friction factor, friction factor 2 if you like. We use this friction factor again to calculate the magnitude of the, the height of the duct in that expression. We use this height of the duct to calculate the equivalent Reynolds number, um, which comes out to be 3.84 times 10 to the 6 and we go back uh, 3.84 times 10 to the 6 on a smooth component, smooth curve here, and we go back to find out the, the magnitude of the friction factor. turns out to be something like point zero point zero zero nine. I don't know, 2, two or something maybe. 
Uh, what do they have? Um, or 0 0.0, yeah, 93, I guess, here. And then, again, use that revised value of the friction factor to calculate the height, calculate the revised magnitude of the Reynolds number, and then go back to this chart with this revised magnitude of the Reynolds number, which really hasn't changed very much, right? 3.87, 3.84 times 10 to the 6, and basically we're at the same point. And so somewhere around here gives you the appropriate friction factor, which would be this final magnitude, which is basically um, uh, 0.0093. So we have the friction factor, it's congruent with the Reynolds number, and so we should be able to use that back in this expression to be able to figure out exactly what the, the flow velocity is. And so we have No, it actually gives us the flow velocity we want. And so if we have a height of um, 0.884 meters, then we know what the width of it is as well, and so that actually satisfies all of our criteria. So it satisfies the criterion that we have a particular pressure drop. We can get this amount of air along it, at uh, along 50 meters for this particular pressure drop, and also that the geometry that we have, because we've used that for our equivalent hydraulic diameters, is always uh, 3 to 1 in width. So that's the, the calculation for um, type 3 geometries, where you have to define the geometries. And so it's a bit involved, but it's basically the um, trying to iterate towards the solution, because we don't know where we start off on the curve. So the last thing we have to do, and we'll do next time, is to talk about pipe flow, when we have pipe networks, and how we measure flow rates in, in pipes as well. So we'll leave it at that.